Fertilization L The sperm journey to the egg. The journey begins with millions of sperm cells that are released into the female reproductive tract during intercourse. The sperm cells gain their full ability to swim when they are ejaculated into the reproductive tract. The goal of a sperm cell is to fertilize an egg. To do so, the sperm cell must pass through a long and challenging path. This is one of the reasons why the total number of modal sperm cells is very important, and a key parameter for a man's potential to reach pregnancy with his partner. Upon ejaculation, the sperm cells are enclosed in a fluid called seminal plasma or semen, which is a mix of fluids from the testes, seminal vesicles, prostate, and the bulbourethral glands. The fluid contains elements which protect the sperm cells during their journey towards the egg. The semen thickens and helps the sperm cells stay inside the woman, as close as possible to the cervix, which is the gate to the egg. Liquid extends from the cervix, allowing the sperm cells from the semen to swim into the cervix. The liquid portion of semen not only provides the sperm with nourishment for the journey, it actually coagulates in a woman's vagina after ejaculation, forming a physical barrier that prevents the sperm from wandering very far in the wrong direction. This protection disappears within half an hour, when the semen reliquifies. Any sperm that hasn't made it up through the cervix by then is clearly not worth saving, and those left behind for more than a few moments doesn't have much of a chance anyway, the vagina is an acidic place to hang out and quickly destroys any errant cells. The biggest key to successful fertilization is timing. Sperm must reach their destination within the right time frame. If they get there too early, they risk dying before the egg shows up. Too late, and the egg will be gone and they'll have missed their shot, so to speak. They also need to pick their destination carefully. An egg is usually only present in one of your two fallopian tubes in any given month. Pick the wrong tube, and the sperm end up hanging out partying together with no guest of honor in sight. Of the millions of sperm cells deposited during intercourse, only very few have the potential to reach the fallopian tubes. Only the strongest sperm cells will make it this far. Once through the cervix, the sperm cells swim across the uterus and into the fallopian tubes. Once inside the tubes, the sperm cells follow signals, a process called chemotaxis, from the supportive cells, called the cumulus cells, of the egg. On the way, the sperm cells undergo a series of biochemical and functional changes, which prepare the sperm cells for fertilization. Eventually, the sperm cells meet a barrier of cumulus cells surrounding the egg. To pass through the barrier created by the cumulus cells, the sperm cells must use their very special stroke, known as hyperactivation. The sperm cell then has to pass another barrier called the zona pellucida, an additional layer of the egg. To pass this barrier the sperm cells now must undergo a process called the acrosome reaction, where enzymes are released from a deposit at the top of the sperm cell. These enzymes will break down the zona pellucida barrier, allowing the sperm to penetrate the egg. As soon as one lucky sperm cell succeeds in penetrating the egg, the egg immediately undergoes a chemical reaction that prevents other sperm cells from penetrating as well. Then the chromosomes carried by the sperm and egg come together, and the egg is officially fertilized. Within a matter of hours, the microscopic zygote divides, then divides again and again. About a week later, a ball of around 100 cells, called a blastocyst, reaches your uterus and settles down into the uterine lining. You have now reached implantation, the moment that fertilization gives way to pregnancy, when the sperm's journey gives way to your own incredible, life-transforming trip to parenthood. Thanks for watching don't forget to like, comments and subscribe.